it was the at the time the fastest yes in Netflix history. We I had been told once you pitch, it'll take about three or four weeks to hear whether or not they say yes because they want to run it through their internal processes and their algorithm. Twenty four hours later, we got a yes. Can you talk about packaging a screenplay and provide some examples on the process? I found that it's critical to have projects that are are fully packaged, not from the sense that agencies are taking a commission, but packaged in terms of, okay, who's the director, who's the actor, here's a screenplay, or here's a pitch, who's the director, who's the actor, and having those attachments in place. Because the marketplace has become so competitive that the streamers are all vying for eyeballs. They're all vying for subscribers. And so there's a belief system that when you walk in the door to pitch something, it has to be undeniable. How do you make that undeniable? Through concept and through who is the actor, or who are the actors that are going to help draw audiences or subscribers to watch what it is that they're providing. And so it's put a lot of um, emphasis on on the package because the, the buyers want to have a sense of confidence that if they're going to invest in this, that they're gonna be people who, who wanna watch it. Once you have the screenplay and the package, what do you do next? Then we determine, okay, who do we wanna to go to? Uh, and so it's always the typical list of um, uh, either like theatrical distribution or the streamers. And theatrical distribution is, is harder and harder and harder because it's, it's so costly to distribute something theatrically. So you really need to have those gigantic tempole, tempole ideas. So I'm just gonna assume for our conversation that we're talking about pitching Netflix, Amazon, um, Apple, Peacock, um, Paramount Plus, all of those places. Um, so then there's a whole conversation around who is the executive or who, what are the teams that we want to pitch at each one of those places? Because we wanna make certain that there's an affinity match. So let's say I have a project that is about um, uh, two teenage girls on a road trip, um, hunting down or tracking their favorite band across the country, okay? Or I've got a, um, a horror movie um, that's like a slasher movie, um, uh, incredibly, yeah, just a horror slasher movie. So I want to find the executives that are really like love, like, oh, a smaller movie, um, a road trip, um, uh, because if I'm pitching that movie to the people who love horror films, they're not going to be inclined to say yes or to, to get it. And so there's a lot of conversations with the other producers, with the agents, with the reps, et cetera, to say, okay, who do we know? Who do we think is gonna be the best match? Is this the same process every time you try to get a movie made? Uh, essentially, yes. Yeah, there may be some fine tuning. Um, uh, so for example, um, there, there's one movie that we're putting together right now um, that I think it's a smaller budget, movie and and so the type of director that we're looking to attach we want to make certain that that director is someone who may be inclined to do a smaller budget movie so that they're at a certain point in their career where they're either so successful that they're looking to do something that's a little bit more on the indie side or maybe it's a director who's had success on the indie side but is looking at their like second or third or fourth movie where um, it's no longer like a, a couple hundred thousand dollars but it's several million dollars as a budget. So it's like the sweet spot of where a director is at in their career and also creatively what they're looking to do. So there's always like some fine tuning but it's still the same idea, we need to attach a director. How did you sell Girl Boss? Oh my gosh, that was such an exciting, awesome process. Um, I was working at Denver and Delilah, which is Charlize Theron's company, and we had gotten the rights to a book by Sophia Amoroso called Girl Boss, and so we were looking to attach a writer to develop 
um, the book into a TV series, and we met with Kay Cannon, and Kay was a writer that I had been tracking. I'd never met with her generally, but I had read her work and, and just really loved her voice, and we met with her, and she had a take on the material. She came in with some thoughts about what she would want to do with it, and it was literally like, this is so awesome. Um, Kay was in a, an overall deal um, as a writer and showrunner um, at 20th Television. And so 20th Television very much wanted Kay to develop a, a TV project for broadcast networks because from, in terms of their business model, that made the most sense as opposed to going to streamers. Um, we thought that the story would be better for streamers because we really saw it as... Um, that the story would not be episodic, that we would tell the story, Sophia's story, over the course of multiple seasons. And so it, um, but again, the studio had this mandate. So we developed the pitch for broadcasters. Um, historically, Kay had sold every pitch that she ever gave in the room. Like it was like, like yes, yes, yes. Uh, and when we pitched Girl Boss to broadcasters, it was like, no, no, no. It just, it wasn't the right match. And so we needed to course correct and redevelop the pitch for streamers, which was easy in the sense that that was always our intent. And um, at the time, 20th Television was not able to be in business at the streamers. There was no business model in place. So then our project moved over to 20th's sister studio, Fox 21, because they could sell to streamers. They had a business model in place. Um, and so uh, I had done a lot of homework. I had lunch with a Netflix executive to say, what are you guys looking for? How do you like your pitches? How do you want us to come in? Because that was still in the earlier days of Netflix. And so um, that was like my version of a meet and greet, <laughs> a general meeting where I'm just getting a sense of what I needed to do. And the executive said, it's so important for us because we're, we go direct to series that you're not just pitching the pilot, you have to pitch the entire season. Like we need to know what's gonna happen over the course of five seasons. And at that time, back when we were pitching Girl Boss, that was still pretty unusual. It's like we didn't, you didn't go in and do that. That requires an entire room full of writers to, uh, to figure that out. But Kay is extraordinary and she cracked five seasons of this character's arc and we did pitch it to multiple places. And when we pitched Netflix, um, like as a producer, I had given her the parameters of what needed to happen creatively in that pitch meeting and she figured it out. She did it. We practiced. We rehearsed. It's like we went over it and over it and over it. She like, we'd meet. She'd send me pages at the end of the day. We'd, I'd give her feedback, and then she would make revisions. And uh, yeah, and again, we rehearsed a bunch of times. Um, and then we developed a visual presentation as well to go along with our pitch. And uh, and it was it was the at the time, the fastest yes in Netflix history. We, I had been told once you pitch, it'll take about three or four weeks to hear whether or not they say yes because they want to run it through their internal processes and their algorithm. 24 hours later, we got a yes. Yeah, it was really exciting. How much of the package for Girl Boss was put together before the Netflix pitch? Well, when we pitched it, if I remember correctly, this was like in 2016, and so it was a different marketplace than it is today. And so we had the book, which was a New York Times bestseller. Um, it was Denver and Delilah, Charlize Theron's company. And it was Kay Cannon, who was a highly sought after writer and showrunner. So the, that was our package. That was, those, that was our elements. We did not have our director and we did not have our lead actress at that time. And then the Netflix relationship came from her prior, you know, being vetted with prior projects. So... That that's you know because you always hear about well how do I get I need to meet a Netflix executive and I'll be I'll be in but mm -hmm. that takes time it's not something that you can just walk in and do. Uh, that is correct. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we see that in all the comments. You know, how, how can I get this to Netflix? So, and how was the series perceived? The critical reviews were mixed, um, and that was that was challenging. Um, talk about not reading the comments, um, and. 
the some of the feedback from critics was that they found our central character to be off-putting mm. and and that broke my heart because we really aspired to have our lead character be a young woman who got to show all of her colors and it's still like one of the things that i really rebel against where it's like female protagonists still have to show up happy competent and well-adjusted. When female protagonists are angry, confused, lost, upset, they are unlikable. And that makes me crazy. Women are not given permission to have the full range of emotions that men are given permission to have. And so people um, certain people felt like she was unlikable. I still get feedback though today from women who are like, oh my gosh, why wasn't it picked up for a second season? I love the show so much. And so I, I felt like social media, like women really responded positively to the show, but um, there are other demographics that didn't.